Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to generate ground truth points in QGIS. So we've got a classified map of Yellowstone National Park and we'd like to generate a bunch of random points that we can use to go into the field, check and see if that particular pixel was classified successfully or not. So this is going to be a five-step workflow. I'm first going to use the random points inside polygons tool, then the point sampling plugin to extract the class values out of the raster. Then we're going to add coordinates to the points using this tool, sort the attribute table, delete a few, and then we're going to export as a KML layer, taking care to set the correct value as the name. So you can jump ahead to any of these steps that you'd like to. So let's go right to it. We've got a QGIS project ready to go. And our first step is going to be to go to Vector, Research Tools, Random Points Inside Polygons. We'll use our Yellowstone shapefile outline as the input layer. We'll use count as the strategy. I'm going to go for uh, 1,000 points, hoping that gives me um, enough in each of my five categories. Note where QJS does not have a stratified uh, points tool, so we're going to do this in a brute force way. We're going to generate 1,000 points and then only keep seven from each class. Minimum distance we can leave alone, and we're going to go to a temporary raster. So here we go. All right, so that's done. Next thing to do is to use the point sampling tool. This is a plugin, so you'll need to go to plugins, search for point sampling tool, and add it. Then, then it'll be down here under analyses. Use it. It's very easy to use. So we're gonna gonna use the layer random points we just created. Go down. We want to extract class values from our from this raster, and we do need to specify a file name. So we'll use the file name Yellowstone Extracted Class Values Two, and I made it into a shape file instead of a geo package. Uh, we'll hit save, hit OK. It's gonna populate those. Great, so now if we open up the attribute table, we see we have the uh, class value uh, of each class in there. Okay, so next thing is to get the coordinates uh, into that table. So we're gonna, for that, we're gonna use the add coordinates to points tool, and we'll use the shape file we just made, and we'll just make it temporary. It's a pretty fast tool. Okay, that's finished. Let's check the attribute table and beautiful. So now we have the class value and the UTM easting and UTM northing values in the table. So the next thing we're going to do is a bit of a brute force move, and I apologize. We're going to go ahead and sort by this YS maximum likelihood, and we're going to delete uh, columns. We're only going to keep seven of each column. And actually, so I'll start editing. First thing I'm going to do is delete all the zeros because we don't want any I don't want to be ground truthing unclassified pixels, so I'll put those in the trash bin. Next, I'm going to count my first seven of class one. I'm going to keep those, and I'm going to keep that highlighted, and I'm going to go down to the last uh, one value and hold down shift, so it's a multi-select, and then we're going to trash all those. So the beauty here is that now we only have seven random points of a value of a class one. So I'm going to repeat that for the remaining four classes, so I only have seven points associated with each class. Okay, I'm back, and I now have seven points of class one, seven points of class two, seven points of class three of four, and seven points of five, okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is actually add a new field that could really help us identify the classes in the field. And that will end up being the name of each point um, in the field. So we're going to use this tool, uh, make a new field. We're actually going to call it name. Um, it's going to be a text string. We'll give it a length of, of five because we're going to use short abbreviations. OK, and so there's a couple of ways to populate this name field. One way to do it is to use the field calculator. Um, if you're handy with the syntax. In this case, I only have 35 rows, so I'm just going to do it manually. Number one's all going to be called water, and I'm just putting a W down arrow, W down arrow, W down arrow. Uh, the twos are all going to be R for rock. 
and so on. 3 is going to be M for meadow, and I'm going to finish it out. So I finished it. They all have a letter associated with them. U is for unburned, B is for burned, and so on. All right, so let's save that. OK, so now we're ready to export this as a KML. Let's right click, export, save feature as. I'm going to choose KML. And we're going to give it a file path to make sure we don't lose it. I'm going to call it Yellowstone Ground Truth Points 3. Third time is the charm. Uh, leave the coordinate system as is so that it's correct with your project. Um, very importantly, the name field is going to be name, where we just put all those letters, like W and U. Those are going to be the names of each point. And then for description, we can put in YS underscore lick max. So that means that those numbers from that field are going to show up as our description. So we'll hit OK, hope for the best. It was added. So the more exciting part is now we can go find it in, Internet, in Windows Explorer and actually open it in uh, Google Maps. There you have it. There's all of your points numbered with unburned, burned. And hey, look, it's unburned and it's burned. You can actually see it. Here's rock. That. So it worked out pretty well. Um, and then what you want to do to get these into your phone, like Gaia GPS app, is you want to email this KML to yourself and then uh, get it out of your email and copy it into Gaia GPS. I've put instructions up on the uh, instructions are linked in the handout for lab. Thanks, everybody.